Hi, my name is Miloš and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Today we'll be scavenging for robot parts, we'll be making electronics to interface with those parts that we found and in the end we'll make a small robot that we can control over Wi-Fi. Let's get to it. What do I mean by scavenging for robot parts? Let's begin by talking about uh, robot actuators. Here in my hand I have a Maxon motor with a Maxon gearbox. These are top of the line used in Mars rovers or all over the industry. But as soon as you see get the quote now on the website, you know you can't buy it for your hobby robot project. Of course there are cheaper options like this brushed uh, DC geared motor or this NEMA 17 that has an additional gearbox on it. They can get, they are pretty low cost. But still, what if you want to go even cheaper and still get pretty good quality motors? So for a project I want to do today, I need some uh, motorized wheels, let's say. I, need a, I want a motor with a gearbox, an encoder and a wheel at the end. So where could we find that pretty cheap? How about this thing? So this is an old broken robot vacuum cleaner. The thing that usually breaks on them is the battery. And after the battery dies, people just throw them out or sell them and people like me buy them for ten dollars and these here are really good quality motors with good gearboxes and encoders that we're gonna use today for making a small robot let's disassemble this thing This is some of the cool stuff that I pulled out of the vacuum and its base. For example, this charging transformer that was in the base or this uh, fan that was actually using as the, used as the vacuum in the vacuum robot. But uh, we're gonna be interested in three parts from here and those are these three. So we'll concentrate on them because we'll use them for our robot further. This is the swivel wheel as you can see. This was on the back of the robot and we're gonna utilize it the same way. And we have the two geared motors which were our main goal of actually disassembling this robot. Uh, one interesting thing about them is, so the motor is here but the encoder is actually here. And if we open up this part. And here is the encoder. If we take a closer look here, you can see that it's like a little cage spinning and here we have a photo detector and a diode so we can actually detect those pulses but we won't be using that uh, for this clip maybe we'll use that in the future as you'll see along in the video before i show you how i designed the mount and how you can design a mount for some unknown geometry like this let's first talk about how this robot will uh, look like in the end now that we have these great little motors it's time to design a robot around them First things first, we need to figure out a form factor for a robot and I want to mimic the TurtleBot 3 which you can see here. So it's a sandwich construction for the robot, as you can see the multiple levels and for the drive system it uses two motors, so a differential drive and a swivel wheel at the back, so we're gonna go with that. Now my next question was, what am I gonna do for the battery? I thought about getting a LiPo battery, but then I remembered I use this on a daily basis. So I'm just gonna reuse this 12 volt battery because we don't need anything stronger and it fits the theme of repurposing other components. Uh, now I'm gonna draw how I want the robot to look like. On to the drawing. Let's begin with the design requirements. The first requirement is the differential drive that I already mentioned. So I want to have two wheels independently driven in the front so we can turn in on the spot, move forwards, backwards or just turn to one side or the other. In the back I want to have the swivel wheel that I also took off from the vacuum cleaner. The next thing that I want to copy from the turtle bot is the sandwich construction. So I want to be able to add multiple layers to the robot so I can add a Raspberry Pi, other sensors and stuff like that down the line. For this first version I want to go with the most widely available motor driver that you've all seen, the L298N motor driver. It's not the best but it will do the job. And I want to use an Arduino Uno R for Wi-Fi. It's incredibly easy to use and it has Wi-Fi, which is the only other requirement I have. And they're both gonna be at the base level. 
Now for the battery, as you've seen, I want to use the drill battery and I want to design a custom uh, holder for it so that the battery actually clicks into it. Uh, this is uh, better for multiple reasons than using just a standard uh, LiPo battery because I don't need a charger, I don't need any kind of protection because I have a charger for the drill and uh, of course the battery itself has built-in protection. Uh, the only con with this is that the holder I'm gonna design is specific to the Parkside battery but you can find a lot of the models for other batteries already available on printables and other such websites. Okay, time to draw out the robot. So the main parts are, as you can see, the wheels and I want to use an aluminum extrusion in the back, the 2020 extrusion, which will be like the backbone of the robot. It, down below we'll, uh, in the, we'll have the main electronics bay and we can add uh, multiple levels to the top and that would pretty much sum up how I want this robot to look like. We're gonna jump into CAD and you'll see the final results with all of the parts that I have. I think this is the most important part of the video because you won't find the same motors or probably not the same batteries as me, but you should know how to design around the things you have. So this is just a mock-up of the battery that you've just seen me hold. I don't actually have the CAD model, I just went and did a rough model and the beautiful thing about 3D printing is I just did a bunch of tests. First it was this kind of test to see if it fits on the battery, then a battery clip test, then this, then this and so on. It was test after test after test, then a context test, just to make sure that the end design worked. And in the end I ended up with something like this, which is essentially a battery holder mount, uh, which has the connections for the battery, the little tabs that you can see here. You solder the wires to that, and the battery just clicks in as it, it, it would into a drill. So, let's go to the robot parts. Uh, here I have the holder for the swivel wheel. If we take a look at the swivel wheel here, it's also a rough mock-up. You just need to get the main dimensions, like the diameter of this shaft or how high it is from here to here and so on. This is the mount for it. Uh, it's a two-piece mount that holds it together and I just put a bit of lube inside just to make sure that it spins freely. That is connected to this. This is just a simple aluminum extrusion that I used for connecting everything. But the most challenging part here, of course, was this. So let me just remove the mount for now. That would be this. Again, this is not an accurate model by any means, but uh, it's pretty good uh, for what we needed here. So I can see, as you can see, the geometry looks like the motor I just showed you but it's not exact and that's completely okay because we'll design the mount uh, with uh, that in mind. So if you look at the mount, I'm mounting it using this screw uh, right here but there is a gap above and below so for any mistakes I made it will compensate and you can add two screws here that will just hold it in place. So even though we can't really get the most accurate dimensions, I mean you can, you can do the iterative process for something like this, I just decided to go with the easier route. But this, that's the process I want you to try and do on the parts that you can find and make your own robot. So if we do this, this... Uh, now we have the main driving assembly. The only thing we need now is the electronics bay. So that would be this. This is the main chassis. Uh, to that we also need the battery of course, which will go here on these posts and besides that we have this, this and this. So this is how our whole robot will look like. Uh, we have the electronics down here and we can uh, add some Arduino shields or maybe we can add some additional levels as I will discuss further but that's gonna be for uh, another video. The electronics for this robot are incredibly simple, at least for now. So I'm gonna use the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. It's really fast and it also has Wi-Fi so it has everything that we need. I'm gonna use the standard L298N module for driving two motors. It's the most widely available one and my goal with this project is to make it as accessible as possible to everyone. This version at least. The next version of this will have a much much better motor driver and we have the battery. 
that's pretty much all it uh, has when it comes to the electronics. Let's now take a look at all of the software and finally test the robot. This is our final code for the Arduino, it's rather simple. We have some libraries that we need to use, so the Wi-Fi library and the UDP library. This is actually how we are going to receive the commands from our PC. So my goal is to use any kind of joystick connected, connected to a PC and using Python send commands to this Arduino. I'll show you how I did that in Python soon. So for the Arduino we just defined the pins. These are some of the necessary variables. And uh, here besides connecting to the Wi-Fi, we just begin with the UDP and we need to pull high uh, both of the driver enabled pins. We can also do some logic where we can uh, send an ARM command and disarm command or maybe attach uh, the enable signals to a sensor that detects if it if the robot is approaching a cliff or something like that. So the whole the only thing that the program does is it listens for any new commands over UDP. Once it receives the command it parses the numbers from that command which are the motor 1 power and motor 2 power. Uh, these are actually just the, the duty cycles for the PWM and if a new command is found we just send that command to the motors and that's pretty much it. Here at the bottom there are just a few functions for printing out the Wi-Fi status. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code and look at Python. Okay, so here's the Python code. Here you can see the libraries that uh, we're gonna use. So the main uh, library is the Pime game library, which I'm using for actually getting the joystick inputs. And at the bottom of your screen now, you can see the joystick I'm using. This is the air aircraft style joystick, but it will serve the purpose for our robot. And I'm gonna use the socket library for actually communicating with the Arduino. For, to communicate with the Arduino, we just need the IP address and the port. The, the same port is configured on the Arduino and we can check the IP address of the Arduino in the common monitor when it uh, connects. So the code is rather simple, just in a while loop we check for the pitch axis which is this and the roll axis which is this. The values and convert those values into PWM values. 12-bit uh, ones and we send those over to the Arduino which parses it as you've already seen. So let's run this code. Let me start it here. Uh, here on the right you can see the joystick movements and if I open up the serial monitor here like so you can now see that the Arduino is parsing all of the commands properly. I'm sending them at 20 Hz, which is more than fast enough for a control system like this, where we just want to drive around the robot. So let's finally put all of the pieces together. And here's our small robot right here. I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out and since we designed it to mimic the turtle bot, I'm calling this one the platypus bot. Platypuses are just uh, some of the most amazing animals and to be honest they look uh, like nature just took a bunch of random bits and put them together, which is exactly what this robot is, so I think it's a pretty soothing name. Let's now get to the fun part and driving around this robot and testing and then I'll discuss some of the future plans I have for this platypus boy. It's finally time to do some testing with our robot platform. So I have it on the table and uh, it's already powered. And as you can see, we can move it around. So how I programmed it is that if I move the stick forward like this, it will move both motors, of course, to move it forward. Uh, same goes for reverse. And if you move it to complete just to one side or the other, 
uh, one wheel will spin the one uh, one way and the other one will spin the other way so it actually turns in the spot and it's pretty quick when it does that and if you push it to some kind of an angle let's say 45 degrees uh, it will go forward but actually steer in that direction like so let me get it back into frame and you can see that the joystick controls are working really nicely the only issue with this joystick is that it has a bit of a drift and this is the sound you can hear now if i stay silent that's just the drift of the joystick not being at zero zero so it's just setting some kind of commands but it's a really fun uh, robot to drive around and when we do some more modifications to it as you will see in a future video we can make it into a real a real turtle bot competitor but yeah uh, it's really fun to drive so let's do some uh, more tests with it now time to do another test so i want to see how good it can climb so i'm just using my desk mat it's not the most gri the grippiest surface but it will do for this test so let's start try going slow yeah so that doesn't work the wheel start just spinning out of control and we can't climb let's try a bit with the run-up yeah still won't work what if we try in reverse maybe like so let's that seems to work much better since the wheels are loaded and we are stuck and we get unstuck seems like we can looks like the left motor is just being stuck and here we go it's actually handling this pretty well especially considering that it was never meant or designed to do anything like this so i'm uh, really happy with it thanks so much for watching so that was the stage one of the platypus bot and here i have the stage two with an added raspberry pi and a 360 lidar on top so we can do some actual robotic stuff like slam algorithms i'll be installing the robot operating system on the pi and also upgrade the power electronics for the next video if you have any questions or comments for now for this stage of the robot, please leave them down below or on Element 14 community where you can find all of the necessary files for you to recreate this sort of project on your own. See you next time!